The Power Shield is now available in some quantities in the Tindy store, so it's the perfect time to talk about configuration and installation, and how to set up the DCCX software on the Arduino. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. A special welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy you made it here. Most of the information I am covering in this video is actually available on the IoTT webpage. So it is a good idea to take the smartphone, scan the QR code on the bottom side of the power shield and read through the information on the webpage that comes up. The configuration of the power shield is a two-step process. In the first step, we need to tell the power shield what I.O. pins of the Arduino should be used. And in the second step, we need to configure the DCCX software to properly address the power shield. Both processes are quite simple and well within the spectrum of what a model railroader is capable to do. And for those of you who don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, I am providing a pre-configured and ready-to-run version of the power shield as well. Just check the configuration options in the Tindy store. You may ask, why is it even necessary to configure the I.O. pins? Why can it not just be set to standard pins like it is the case with the Arduino motor shield? Well, the reason is flexibility. The Arduino motor shield is permanently wired for I.O. pins 3 and 12 for channel A and 11 and 13 for channel B. This is even printed to the board and it's great if you want to use it that way. However, if you want to change the pins it is not easily possible. Or if you would like to add a second motor shield to support DC districts in a future version of DCCX, you can't do it without modifying the board because each channel needs its own set of I.O. pins. For that reason, I made the power shield fully configurable. Each shield can be set to the I.O. pins you want, as long as they are supported by the Arduino. To control the power shield and to protect it against short circuit and overload, we need two I.O. pins and one analog input pin from the Arduino. The DCCX recommendation is using the pins that are assigned to the original Arduino motor shield. For the main track that is pin 3 for power control, pin 12 for the PWM1 signal and analog pin 0 for the current sensor. The PROC track uses pin 11 for power control, pin 13 for PWM1 and analog input 1 for the current sensor. So let me show you how to configure the power shield for those I.O. pins. On the I.O. pad field of the power shield are four pin rows marked with a white bar. Those are the four signal lines for power, brake, PWM1 and PWM2 that go to the IBT2 chips. For the standard configuration we only need power and PWM1. PWM2 is just a negative copy of PWM1 and is generated on the power shield board if the source selector jumper is set to internal. This is the better solution than using an additional I.O. pin of the Arduino. And the brake pin is not used when running DCC but will be needed in the future version of DCCX to support DC power districts so the power shield is already prepared for that. For the same configuration like the motor shield channel A, we need to connect power and PWM1 to IOS 3 and 12. Those IO signals are connected to the pads adjacent to the white row. On one side there is the row with IOS 2 to 7, the row on the other side has IOS 8 to 13. All we need to do is bridging between the pin number and the white signal bar and to make it really simple I'm including three pin headers and jumpers with the power shield. Cut the pin headers to sections of two pins and solder them to the location so that one pin is on the desired IO pin and the other on the white signal bar. Solder them on the back side of the power shield and then add the jumper to make the connection. 
Now you have a removable connection, so if you ever want to reconfigure the power shield, you simply add another pin and move the jumper to the new location without having to desolder an existing connection, which is far more difficult than soldering an additional pin to the board. Repeat the process for the second IO pin, in our case a bridge between PWM1 signal line and IO pin number 12. Also here, put the jumper on the pins to close the gap. Then we do the same for the analog pin in the smaller analog pad field. For the default configuration, we bridge between the white analog signal line and pin A0. That's it. The power shield is now configured for the typical main track settings. Now we can repeat the process on a second power shield for the broke track. This time using pins 11 for power, 13 for PWM1 and A1 for the analog signal. Same process, solder the pin header to the correct location, then put on the jumper to close the gap. What I just showed you is the recommended pin configuration if you use two power shield boards and no Arduino motor shield. And you will get two track outputs that each can supply 5 amps of track current. Another option is to keep the Arduino motor shield for the programming track and adding only one power shield for the main track. In this configuration, only one channel of the motor shield is used, typically channel B, and the other channel is not connected to the track. For the power and PWM1 signal, we can still use pins 3 and 12 on the power shield. Yes, the same signals are also used by the motor shield, but it does not matter because we are not using channel A of the motor shield, so it does not matter if they also receive the signals and even provide a DCC signal on the terminal block of channel A, as long as we leave them unconnected. This is different though for the analog input to sense the track current. A single analog input can only be used for one device, either motor shield or power shield, but not for both at the same time. One possibility would be to cut the sensor trace for A0 on the motor shield and connect the power shield to A0. However, this requires a modification of the motor shield board something that is potentially difficult to undo if you want to use it again later. The better way is to use analog input A2 for the power shield instead and change the software configuration accordingly. So we solder the jumper pins to bridge between the white analog bar and pin A2, add the jumper and we are done with the hardware configuration. To configure DCC-X for the power shield, you need to load the source code and adjust the settings before downloading the program into the Arduino. I hope in the future the power shield will be supported in the DCC-X installer as well, but at this time it is not the case. If you do not have the Arduino IDE running and the DCC-X source code installed on your system, Follow the instructions on the DCCX web page to set it up. Once you have the DCCX source code loaded in the Arduino IDE, open the motordrivers.h file. Scroll down a few lines to the definition of the standard motor shield. We could now go ahead and just make changes to the settings for the standard motor shield, but it would be somewhat bad practice as we would override the current settings. The correct way is making a new definition for the power shield. We start by copying the standard motor shield entry and renaming it, for example, to power shield IOTT or something similar. Then we can change the settings to match the position of the jumpers we just soldered on the board. Now it is important to understand what this definition does. As you see, it has two lines that are very similar. The first one is to define the output pins of the main track and the second to do the same for the programming track. This is important to remember and understand.
If we send a command to switch on the track power, the Arduino will activate the power pin that is defined in the first entry of the definition. And if we try to send a programming command, DCCX will send it to the pins defined in the second line of the definition. So, if we want to use the motor shield channel B as programming track, pins 11 and 13 need to be defined in the second entry. And if we want to use the power shield for the main track, the pin settings need to go in the first line. Let's look at some examples. The first one is for using two power shields as configured before. Power Shield 1, which is used for the DCCX main track, is set to use IO pins 3 and 12, so we set 3 for the power pin and 12 for the PWM1 pin. The definition of the parameters, by the way, can be found in the file motordriver.h in lines 48 and 49. We are not using signal pin 2 and brake pin, so those two entries are set to unused pin. Then comes the analog pin for the current sensor, which we have connected to analog pin 0, so we set it to A0. Then comes the sense factor, which is used for the conversion of the measured analog value to milliamps. It depends on the resistor that is used to measure the current. For the power shield, we set this value to 8.13. The next entry is for the trip current. The power shield is designed for 5 amps track current, but I typically set this value a little higher to compensate for short-term high current pulses, for example to 6000 milliamps. If you are a garden railroader and use the external version of the power shield, you may even try to set this value to 8 or 9000 milliamps to allow for higher currents. Technically, the measured value is correct for settings of up to 10,000 milliamps. The last entry is for defining a fault pin to let the Arduino know that there is a problem with the shield, but since this feature is not implemented on the power shield, we enter unused pin as well. Then we repeat the process for the second power shield, which is used for the programming track. Here is another example with the settings for one single power shield for main and the standard Arduino motor shield for the programming track. Again, the power shield for main goes into the first line, but as discussed earlier, we configured it for using a 2 as current sensor input, so the analog pin needs to be set to a 2 and on the second line, we specify channel B of the motor shield as programming track, so pins 11 and 13 for power and PWM1, and A1 as sensor input. Finally, we need to tell DCCX that it should use these new settings. For that, we open the DCCX config file. If you have created your own, that would be config.h. If you are using the default source code, that would be config.example.h. Open it and scroll down to the line where it says define motor shield type, somewhere around line 50. Change standard motor shield to the name you have given the power shield definition. And that's it. You now can compile the sketch and download it to the Arduino and your configuration is complete. If everything is correct, you now can switch on the Arduino track power from your favorite model railroad software, and you should see the LED on the power shield turn on in yellow-green, indicating that there is track power. You are now ready to run your trains. Before you do so, it is a good idea to verify that the overload protection of the power shield works. To do that, you first need to make sure that your power supply is capable to deliver more current than the settings you chose in the trip current settings. Otherwise, the power supply will shut down before the current limiter of DCCX is activated. And then you need to find a way to draw more than 5 amps in a controlled way. 
I usually use an automotive headlight bulb for that purpose and set the track power to 12 volts. I then connect both glow vents in parallel, which ensures a current higher than 5 amps, and connect the bulb to the track to verify that the Arduino shuts down the power. I then also verify that the power shield indeed can deliver around 5 amps continuously by connecting only the headlight glow vent and make sure it stays on. When using a DCC aux shield, you can combine the power supply for the power shield and the Arduino into one. To do so, put an additional jumper on the V-in pins. This makes a connection from the power shield power supply to the V-in pin of the Arduino and therefore no separate power supply is needed. You can feed the power supply with voltages of up to 18 volts without causing harm to the Arduino. But careful, don't try that without a DCC aux shield in place or you may burn the voltage regulator of the Arduino. With the DCC aux shield in place, you can also add an IoT stick, load the modified DCC X software introduced in video number 104, and open the amp meter page and get a real time display of the current drawn from the power shield when the track is turned on. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you feel comfortable to configure your power shield for the Arduino DCC X stack. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. Every like helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general, as it motivates YouTube to suggest this video to other model railroaders. I really enjoy getting feedback from my viewers, so please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.